Dear Heavenly Father, we're all a bit tired in the afternoon. I ask you to please wake our minds up and give us clarity of thought so we can understand your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Who's ever heard of the Hebrew sanctuary? I know Melissa has. I know Melissa has. Yeah, okay. So, the sanctuary was created for one purpose. Does anyone know where to find that? Verse? Oh. Yeah, 25 8 Exodus. Yeah, come on. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to read that to them? <laughs> okay, so let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. <laughs> so Exodus 25 8, write that down. So why did they need a sanctuary <coughs> for God? So God can safely live with us? So that God can live with us. And yeah. Why couldn't God just come down and stand next to us right now? Wait, I did not. Translate. Oh, there he is. That's what. Uh, we'll just read the Hebrews one. That's fine anyway. I'm not going to read it. Um, it's Hebrews twelve twenty nine. Hebrew baro umotish. And it's very basic. Hebrew baro umotish. It just says, "For our God is a consuming fire." Isaiah thirty three. So there's obviously, there's the other one while you're going to this verse, before we talk about it. If we see Moses, when he tried to visit God on Sinai, he had to hide himself in the cleft of the rock. Or he would be destroyed. Okay, so read this Isaiah 33 14. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearful, fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among them shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among them uh, shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that and do you, you just read the rest of it? Yeah. So like Hebrews said, God is a consuming fire. He is the everlasting fire. So remember when it says we'll be we'll be consumed with everlasting fire? Where the wicked will be consumed? 
It also says in the Bible, Jesus will be, uh, they will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. So God is the fire. And he will consume anyone that has wickedness in them. So this is why he made the sanctuary service. Or at least one of the main reasons. So the priests could talk directly to God. But the, the second reason was a prophecy. But we're just going to go over the very basics of the structure of the sanctuary now. Which will help us understand prophecies in the next lesson. Depending how we go. <laughs> okay. So, the basic structure of the sanctuary. Let's do it from the top down view. Okay. So, you had, what's that? The people who know, what's the first thing? Okay. Altar of sacrifice. And then what was next, Jonah? Should I do you know? Yeah, the labor of washing. And then what was that? So there was the veil now. So you had a structure here. And that was the veil, okay? Okay. And this was the holy place. Okay. Now what do we have? Has anyone seen a menorah before? <laughs> the candlesticks. <laughs> and how many were there? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> okay. And the top of them looked like an almond. Which is interesting because if you go to Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia, it's called Almond Mountain or Jabal El Laws. Jabal El Laws. It's just the Almond Mountain, okay? Okay, so they had oil in there, okay? So, it oil. Yeah. And then you had... What was this one? I'll give you a hint. <laughs> People who know? Good baby. Good baby. All Yes, okay. So, altar of incense and this one was the candlesticks and I want you to remember all this <laughs> okay and then one last thing in there that is table of showbread yep table of showbread Now, if you want to look into this and read it, 
it starts in Exodus 25. Keep going from there. Okay. Okay, so then there was another veil here. Oh, Okay. Yeah, it's not your veil and veil. No, it's because of my accent. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. So, and in here, what was here? The mercy seat, yeah. That's what you said, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the mercy seat. Mercy. Also, and this was the Ark of the Covenant, okay? Okay, so, and it had the two angels on there. I'm not even going to try and draw them. And, yeah, that's the mercy seat. Okay, what was in this? And it had a little bit of a The rod of Aaron. So this was kind of a table, um, and the ark was on it. And to the side of the table, what was there? Does anyone know? So the ceremonial hall. But I heard you saying something else. You said Aaron's rod. Yes. And what else? Manna. Manna. You got it. And what else? The most important thing. Yes. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, the tables of the Ten Commandments. Okay, and above, you can't see it from here, but above, what would appear between the two angels? Oh. It was called the Shekinah glory, or in other words, it was the presence of God, okay? Okay. So, all of this process had one very clear point, which was to cleanse the high priest so he could come all the way into here. So he could get direct instruction from God. So the high priest had a few things different about him too. He had on his chest, what did he have? Does, does anyone know? What's that? The breastplate. The breastplate. Yeah. With the, the stones. Right? Okay. And he had these little baubles off his thing. <coughs> We made noise. Kind of like this. He's not making noise. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, okay, so the main thing. What started to happen when when Israel, when this was built into a, the actual temple, right at the end when Jesus was, was there, or even before that, people would come in here and just drop dead because they hadn't fulfilled the, this service properly. 
And they got to the point where they tied a rope around them before they sent them in. So they, they could drag them out. In our previous central class, we were passing this, and our teacher said that no one actually died like that, I mean, just a few. Oh, it's just a theory, is it? Okay, yeah, that might be true, so translate. So it may or may not be true. There are a lot of apocryphal stories like that. Anyway, beside the point. So let's look at it. What was the altar of sacrifice for? The name kind of gives it away, right? Okay, they would sacrifice a lamb or a goat or a, a bull. Or a dog. Yeah. Okay. That was for their sins or the sins of the people. What was this representing? Okay. Then we moved on to the labor of washing. So they would clean the blood off. Okay. What's that? Baptism. Yeah. Baptism. Baptism. And what does baptism do for us? Huh? Okay. <coughs> what does baptism do for us? What's the point of baptism? Baptism does anyone know? Baptism is like we are dying with Christ and we are uh, dying with So why do we have to have the symbol of dying? What's the penalty for sin? Death. Any sin, any little sin in your life, death. But he made an easy way out for us. So that's why um, in baptism we use a lot of water. You go all the way under the water. Stop breathing, stop seeing. Full submission. You're dead. Then back up as a new person. Okay, so that's the labor of washing. Let's go into here. What are, what are the candlesticks? So anyone know? Remember they have oil. Yeah. Remember at Pentecost? They had fire on their heads. When they're filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what that's representing. Okay, what's the altar of sacrifice? Oh, incense. Oh, sorry, incense. Okay. Altar of incense. The smoke. Okay. There you go. The, the smoke represents our prayers. Going up to heaven. So, 
this one candlestick is Holy Spirit. Oh, the oil is in there. Okay, so table of showbread. I did that from the table. Who knows what that represents? Either maniki, you done it. Bread? You should have asked for what is. Like God's word. Yeah, so unleavened bread, yeah. So yeast, yeah, yeast represented sin. Yeah, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little bit of yeast makes the whole thing full of yeast. <laughs> Okay, so that's the uh, word of God, okay? Which is pure. Okay, so now we go into the veil, okay? So this is the holy place, this is the most holy place. So, at the point, I'm going to say that the clown is a prank on him. Therefore, the brick was a kind of set up and say, Povitra Sun. Airport is section with him, Maha Povitra Sun. Now, this represents heaven, okay? Okay. Now, there was a time, one of the sacrifices, the high priest would take the blood and offer it there. Now, does anyone remember anywhere in the Bible that talks about that? Why did God offer His blood? Yeah. Without blood, there is no forgiveness. No forgiveness. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So this is representing when Christ, our High Priest. He will he, he went to heaven to offer his to show God this is my sacrifice. Is that acceptable? And clearly it was. Okay. So the Ten Commandments were in the middle. So Written with the hand of God. Can't be changed. Including the fourth and the second. No idol worship. Remember the Sabbath day. And on the outside. The ceremonial law. The law that, um, while it's important, a lot of it was designed to remind people of this service. And remind people of how horrible sin is. There are a lot of sacrifices and different things they had to do in that ceremonial law. But no longer were relevant after Jesus did this. So that law, or at least the ceremonial component of it, is no longer relevant. That's why we don't have to kill turtle dogs or do any of these things anymore. Because that was all only to show us about Jesus. And that's where this verse comes in. Go to Colossians. Uh, verses, uh, sorry, 2, Colossians 2. Colossians 2, 
and 14. Good the book. Actually, let's go to 13 to give it a little bit of context. That would be just a good And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh have quickened together with him that having forgiven you all trespasses. And you should come on your talk or the other manche, thought said it, me to come on your bed, I have to Jimmy to Korea. I'm going to come off the path for you. So this is Colossians 2 verse 13. Okay. So then 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. So there's a few different interpretations of this verse. But the one we subscribe to as a church is the handwriting of ordinances, this here. Because you had the law, and then the ordinances for the Jewish government. Now how does that say that in that book because there are different bible versions that say it differently can you can you do a direct translation of that yeah this one? yeah does it sound the same as mine that's all i'm asking does it say the handwriting ordinances I'm reading on, uh, yeah, yeah okay good good some of the versions change it and make it wrong okay mm -hmm. so So there, if you skip down to 16, it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or the Sabbath days. These are all the feast days mentioned in there, in the handwriting of ordinances. So the feast days were called ceremonial Sabbaths. So they were the rest days. Or days of celebration. The Sabbath was still here written on stone. Okay. So, and also where it says, let no man judge you in meat. Or drink or in respect of the holy day. It's talking regarding to all the different sacrificial ceremonies that people had. Because people still in some places kept the Passover. And it says, 17 clarifies which ones it's talking about. So 17 clarifies verse 16. It says, all these things which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So it's saying all these little sacrificial laws, they were a shadow of Christ. So we don't need to do them anymore because Christ's already here. He already paid the price. So all this stuff's not relevant anymore. Now, does it mean this law is all a waste of time? Well, this is called the Levitical law. Now, the Levitical law talk, talks about a lot of things. It talks about sexual immorality, including homosexuality, um, all sorts of horrible stuff, actually. And it says they're wrong. 
Does that mean that law is nailed to the cross? It's okay to be gay now? No, so we're important not to overread what that's saying. Is uh, homosexuality a shadow of things to come? No, it's just a, a bad thing that we shouldn't do. Okay, so, and that's when you're looking at the law. In many, but not all of them, there are three different versions, uh, three different uh Three different parts to the law. When I say that, I say this law here, the Levitical law. There are three three parts to the law. One. There is the uh, the law itself. So, the law. And then there's the punishment. Or the treatment. Okay, because sometimes the law was, for example, if a house got mold in it. It would give you a way to cure that mold. Like with a quarantine or something. Okay. So, the law was if you had a mouldy house, you had to clean it. And they gave you a method of cleaning. And then you had to do a sacrifice. Okay. So, if we've got a law, that the house needs to be clean, what's that for? Is that for, for good? That's for our good, right? So it's not against us. Like that verse says. No, it's just helpful to us. Because if you've got toxic mold in a house, it can give you lung disease, it can kill you. So this never goes away. That's always applicable. Now the, the punishment or the treatment there's a lot of methods we have now of cleaning up mold that are very different to back then. So that's a maybe. Okay? Maybe. This applies to us now. But the sacrifice, what's that representing? That's representing Christ. Okay? And that's done. So this bit doesn't count anymore. Now, not all of this is that clear cut. There are some verses like mixing of linen and and thing, and um, cotton. That could be either way. <coughs> like we don't know. So, don't know. There's a lot of different ver people who have different ideas about that. <coughs> but most of the time it's clear. And that's 
one of those times is with the eating of meat, okay? There's clean meats and unclean meat. How much time have we got? Five. Six minutes. Yeah, five. Five minutes. Okay. So the clean meats. They're like the chicken, the beef, the lamb. <coughs> Yeah, yeah. Unclean meats are like pork, like pig. And also, um, seafood, shellfish, sugar, 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 so one of the, uh, the fish without scales. The mass, All sorts of different things, okay? But if you want to read it, just read it in Le Leviticus. Uh, uh, and um, you'll find most of this unclean meat, or if not all of it, they're scavengers. They they eat meat. They they are like shellfish. They live on the bottom of the water. And they clean the water. So they take in all the mercury and all the toxins. Yeah, yeah. And if you eat prawns, you're taking in all that mercury and all those toxins. And that accumulates in your brain. And if you get enough, you go crazy. But most people don't eat too much. So it just affects their health and their general happiness. For example, there's a fish called tuna, right? And it's a very big fish. They can be up to 60 kilograms. Okay, and they have a few little scales on them. But generally they're without scales. So some people argue you can eat them. But I think it's very clear that you can't. Now we know of a person who, who to, to try and improve their health, they would eat a little tin of tuna every day. Because they thought they were helping themselves. After about six months of doing that, they had extremely toxic le levels of mercury. And she almost died. So, so I think the idea is the bigger the fish, the more they eat other fish, they concentrate all those toxins more and more in the body. Yes, biomagnification. Is that nailed to the cross? Did that point towards Christ? 
No, it's just plain logic. No, you know what's her logic? Don't eat a pig because they can transfer diseases to you. Because pigs actually are very similar to us in our anatomy. So much so that people have used pigs' hearts, the heart of a pig, and transplanted them into people. And it works. Even monk, even monkey. monkey. Probably, yeah. Uh, not my old uncle was had an accident, a terrible accident. Yeah. And he, so the accident was that he wanted to save a girl, mm. trying to be like good big boy, and uh, the bad people came and they you know put a knife through him. Yeah. And then that actually cut, punctured his lung. Yeah, yeah. And then he couldn't, like, no. Everyone refused to, you know, to be here in Bangladesh. So he was taken to India. And, yeah. So he, he, has, he has monkey lung. A monkey lung. A monkey lung. Slide it, Go on. So, I'm going to ask for Mama Asse. I will tell them later. Okay, anyway. So, these things, there are some things in there that are perfectly applicable today. But we go a step further than this because God sent us a prophet that told us right near the end of time it would be unsafe to eat meat. Because of all the industrial pollution, all of these things, now even clean meats are dangerous to eat. And, okay, so we're up out of time. Alright, so... That was what that was nailed to the cross. So I'll just finish on one thought, okay? The 619 laws contained in here. So these laws, now it can be, people say 612 or 600, you can count them differently. But basically, 619 laws, they were an expansion of the 10 laws. The 10 commandments. And the 10 commandments were an expansion of two laws. Love your neighbor as yourself. And love God with all your heart, mind and spirit. They give a bit more detail. And then get, they gave a lot of detail applying to Jerusalem. And to, sorry, to the, the Jewish people. Some still apply. Some don't. Okay, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping our minds awake during this time. Thank you also for laying out. Uh, your plan so clearly in the sanctuary. I ask you to help us to trust your sacrifice. And help us to live like you. In Jesus' name. Amen.